Oh, sorry, I was reading a bit of the scripture, you know. Everybody loves a good RPG, right? You know, swinging a sword, shooting fire, saving a princess, you know, they're all really good staples of an RPG. But of these two, which is the better one? Dragon Quest or Final Fantasy? In this episode of Clashbacks, we take a look at the two RPGs that have stood the test of time under the watchful eyes of Square Enix and, uh, Square, Square Enix. I'm your host, Jared, and welcome to Clashbacks. Strap in, ladies and gents, because it's time for a good old-fashioned history lesson. On May 27th, 1986, a little game called Dragon Quest was released for the MSX. It was created by Yuji Horii, and it was designed to introduce the masses to the concept of the RPG, as for the longest time it was just kind of known as a concept for a tabletop game. And, you know, considering how many RPGs there are now, I could say that's, you know, mission accomplished. Final Fantasy's origins were a bit mixed, if we can say it. After numerous uh, lackluster games and the possibility of even going under, Square was inspired by a certain RPG in order to make their own. Now, now I hear some of you in the peanut allergy gallery is like, what was the game that inspired it? Well, it was Dragon Quest, of course. And thus, Final Fantasy was born. Initially released in 87, and to the Yankee Doodlers in 1990, this game followed a similar path to Dragon Quest with a few extra bells and whistles. From then on, these two games would grow in popularity for years and years to come. Now that you're caught up speed, let's get the show rolling. Dragon Quest has almost always been very basic in its approach in terms of your traditional RPG. You buy equipment, fight monsters, explore dungeons, and converse with NPCs to learn about the world, or maybe just see some funny stuff. The battle system is also just as basic, using the tried and tested turn-based battle system. You'd have to absolutely try your hardest to make turn-based combat bad, and unfortunately many have succeeded. Not Dragon Quest though. They've stuck true to this formula and it has come through for them time and time again. Now in more recent games they've added things to enhance your battling experience. Characters are able to raise their power by psyching themselves up in Dragon Quest 8, or perform super moves such as coup de grace in Dragon Quest 9 and pet powers in 11. On the other side of the bow, Final Fantasy has always tried to change their formula with each game, such as leveling up every single god dang detail of your character in 2, adding in a job system in 3 and 5, a couple of MMOs here and there, and even changing the formula into an action RPG from 13 and onwards. But none of these additions were as impactful as the active time battle system, or ATB, that was introduced in Final Fantasy 4 which allowed for battles to take place in real time, causing for more immediate strategies to take place. This mechanic really put people on their toes and forced them to think and strategize on the fly, because if they didn't, they were drop kicked into the stratosphere. Now this system would carry on into the main series until Final Fantasy X, but even showed up in other Square games like Chrono Trigger. Now, when comparing these two, I'm going to give this one to Final Fantasy, as they've attempted to keep their games fresh throughout the years, while Dragon Quest has been reluctant to change up their formula too much. That's not to say that Dragon Quest is stale, mind you, as there are many other factors in determining the enjoyability of the games. When compared to Final Fantasy in this category, it falls a bit short. Point goes to fantasy. It's time to talk about plots and the characters. Now when it comes to the stories, they're mostly standalone, aside from a few exceptions, but uh, <clears throat> we don't talk about those games. We just, we just don't. Now some of you are asking, what makes a good story, and why is your hair so great? Now to answer those questions, you need interesting characters, a captivating story, compelling conflicts, and of course, <laughs> great shampoo. Stories for these games vary from game to game. Some are very lighthearted treks through a big world, while others deal with the literal post-apocalyptic hellscape where everything is death and life is literally a painful existence that you just want to escape from. Whatever the main plot is though, the games strive to discuss some pretty touchy subjects as RPGs tend to do. Concept of death and acceptance, how far one is willing to go to get revenge, standing up against evil when literally everything around you is bleak and lifeless, these games tackle it all. From what I've seen, Final Fantasy likes to tackle serious topics more often, while Dragon Quest tackles light-hearted monster-of-the-day formulas for the majority of the game. There's nothing wrong with that, mind you, but 
I digress. The characters are a different subject entirely. The majority of characters from Dragon Quest, while basic, can be really fun to play with as their story progresses. DQ's cast is relatively small compared to other RPGs, which is actually a good thing since you have more time to get to know the characters and their use in battle is more important. Final Fantasy follows this formula somewhat. While they'll occasionally have a small cast, like the early games and the boys from Final Fantasy XV, most games end up having party members in the double digits. Think I'm lying? Final Fantasy VI has a total of 14 playable characters and only about 5 or 6 of them actually have any significant character or use on the battlefield. That's nuts. I'm getting off track here, uh, back to Dragon Quest. Some more notable characters like Bianca from Dragon Quest V and Angela from Dragon Quest VIII have become so popular that they've appeared in other games in the series and spin-offs like Fortune Street. DQ's got a good track record with their cast. Sure, not all of them are going to be amazing, but you'd be hard-pressed to find a party member you dislike. Final Fantasy, on the other hand, is a bit of a mixed bag. Like Dragon Quest, their characters start out in a pretty basic one-dimensional way, but starting from Final Fantasy IV, <laughs> they really got their <laughs> arc together. <laughs> <laughs> Characters like Cecil from 4 and Celeste from 6 start out as reluctant bad guys, but through their actions as their stories progress, they eventually become bona fide heroes. Of course, we can't forget about everyone's favorite pretty boy, Cloud God, I want Zack's Buster Sword of my materia slot strife. He is by far the most popular Final Fantasy character. So popular, in fact, that he's practically everywhere you look. Hell, I'm pretty sure Square sends out the Cloud Strife button to developers sometimes. So like I said, the characters were pretty basic, but now they're pretty good. However, after a while, it seems that the characters were hit by the Paramore stick and shot with the Shonen protagonist gun. These types of protagonists were either brooding loners that <clears throat> don't need help from anyone because no one can understand my struggles, <clears throat> or acted like loud, obnoxious brats that annoyed anything and everyone around them. <clears throat> Mm, Titus. If you'd like an example, simply play any Kingdom Hearts game. I'm gonna go ahead and give this point to DQ, as they've been very consistent with their characters and story, while Final Fantasy is usually hit or miss. Usually with Dragon Quest, they have pretty small cast of characters, while some Final Fantasy games have way too many characters, and I mean way too many characters. Point goes to Quest. Okay, this category is purely subjective, as it's essentially Akira Toriyama versus like five other dudes. Okay, okay. Let's get the hard part of the way concerning Final Fantasy's many character and monster designers. Like I mentioned three seconds ago, Final Fantasy has had a plethora of character and monster designers for their games over the years, each having their own unique art style. At first, the characters were cutesy looking chibi warriors, then they became something you'd see in a renaissance painting, and eventually they reached their true final form, that being something you'd see on a weeb's wall in their room. This particular design is mainly due to Tetsuya Nomura, famous for his character and monster designs from Final Fantasy 6 and 7, such as Tifa, Cloud, Setzer, and a few other pretty boys. Now sure, he's more well known for Kingdom parts and all the confusion that goes with that, but without him, characters like Cloud may not have been as popular. Now with more recent releases, the characters look extremely realistic. In fact, you'd think they were straight out of a K-pop boy band or something. Now moving on to the monster designs, the regular enemies are pretty normal, but hot damn do the boss monsters look absolutely terrifying. This stuff looks like it'd be straight out of D&D or Game of Thrones. It really gives you a sense of danger when you play these games to where suddenly you come across big old Godzilla while on a leisurely stroll. Moving on to Dragon Quest designs. You like the designs of Dragon Ball? If so, you're gonna absolutely love the designs of Dragon Quest. As I mentioned before, Akira Toriyama, you know, the same person who designed Dragon Ball, if you didn't know, designed both the character and monster designs, and it really shows. The character designs look straight out of the Dragon Ball world. Heck, Erdrick looks like Goku back when he was a kid. The monsters themselves are so expressive and animated that it's kind of hard to forget their goofy expressions as you plunge your sword into their still smiling faces. <laughs> In fact, the monsters are so memorable, there have been several side games based on them alone. Now, if it doesn't seem too obvious already, I'm a big fan of Toriyama's art style, and I much prefer the designs of Dragon Quest over Final Fantasy, and because of this, Quest gets the point. Yep. Hey, did I mention that Kuro Toriyama? No game is complete without some music to jam to, and Final Fantasy definitely doesn't disappoint. Throughout the years, they've been able to create some absolute bangers. Even the limitations of earlier consoles couldn't stop them from pumping out bop after bop after bop after bop after bop after bop, after bop. and they've only gotten better since. This is, of course, thanks to the main Final Fantasy composer, Nobuo Yamatsu, who's worked on every main Final Fantasy title, as well as having a hand in Chrono Trigger's music and, strangely, the opening song of Super Smash Bros. Brawl. 
The man's a genius, and you can really see that for yourself once you listen to some of his iconic tracks. The best part is that each game's music genre is very different. Depending on which game you decide to play, your ears can be subjugated to something resembling a grand orchestra, a futuristic showdown, or even a straight up hard rock concert. There's just so much variety that it's kind of tragic that I can't really say the same thing about Dragon Quest, unfortunately. Now, to be fair, the music in Dragon Quest practically screams big grand adventure with its use of an orchestra, when it's actually able to get into the US versions of the game, that is, to get the point across that this is the hero's journey, to save whatever land he or she is from. And just like Final Fantasy, they managed to put out some great pieces that are an absolute delight to listen to. Now this time, the credit goes to Koichi Sugiyama. Controversial opinions and actions aside, he's a great composer who manages to make every journey you have a dramatic and thrilling adventure. However, if you're expecting any sort of variety in the soundtrack, you may be pretty disappointed, since most of the game's music seems to mesh and sound the same. It might be hard to find a tune that resonates well with people. Granted, it's not impossible, but it is certainly a challenge. If you're not really a fan of orchestrated music, then Dragon Quest might not be for you sound-wise. Fantasy doesn't really seem to have that problem, as it's able to appeal to anyone's preference. So, once again, due to Dragon Quest's reluctance to branch out and try new things, Fantasy takes the point for this category. And once again, it's all tied up. Let's finish this with the final category, Legacy, which it was always that category and never anything stupid like something like lasting impressions or whatever. Okay, so this is gonna be a tough one because I've got a soft spot for both of these game series. It's no secret that Dragon Quest paved the way for tons of RPGs and has cemented its legacy as being one of the best RPG franchises of all time. I'm being 100% serious when I say that Dragon Quest is a timeless series. Final Fantasy is no different, getting so popular that even the average Joe, Joanna, Joe Mama, Jotaro, Jojo, Josephine, Joey, Jonathan, or Joseph Stalin can recognize the characters in music. But Final Fantasy went above and beyond with its presentation, allowing every installment to give players a new experience. Whether it's through different gameplay methods, dynamic storytelling mechanics, and character developments, or even the simple concept of using different kinds of music, you wouldn't really normally see that in just any old RPG. Sure, not everything's going to be a smash hit, but at the very least, they're willing to try and constantly innovate and keep the series feeling fresh, even if it does feel like it's had a huge identity crisis since 11. Dragon Quest, by comparison, seems to just be stuck in the past, with an almost utter refusal to change up the formula. Hey, so this script was recorded way before they announced Dragon Quest XII, and that it's being a vastly different game compared to the previous entries, but I'm a firm believer that I'll believe it when I see it, so, uh, yeah. That's not to say the past is a bad thing. If Dragon Quest can still stick around by doing what it knows best, that's perfectly fine. Impressive, even. But while it does make changes every now and then, it's a very slow process. Now, I'm sure you've noticed a certain theme that's been reoccurring throughout this video, innovation versus tradition. With Final Fantasy, they seek to do something new every single time, while Dragon Quest, for some reason, sticks to the same formula again and again. Don't get me wrong, it's a great formula, but it's still the same. Hell, if you don't count Pokemon, Dragon Quest IX was technically my first experience with RPGs as a whole. This may be a tough decision, but I have to put my bias aside for this one. The winner, an overall better RPG franchise, in my opinion, is Final Fantasy. Thank you all so very much for listening to this man-child ramble on about anime and dragons and stuff. I assure you that the next video will be a bit more, let's say, mainstream. With that being said, I've been Jared, you have a nice day, or evening, or morning, or night, or have, have a nice whatever, okay? Whatever. Jeez. Oh, that's not good. Ooh, that's not good at all. I'm gonna fish it in there. Oh god. Oh god, why did I think it was good? Oh, maybe this will help. Ah, oh, that works. Ah. Note to self. Pickles. I'm not good cocktail. Stuff. Oh, I didn't want to finish this. That was for you, starving children in Africa. Hope you're happy.